All right, guys, it is time to discuss the January 15th team of the week. We're going to start with the 92, Artemi Panarin. Uh, it comes with X, under six foot at 5'11 and 168. He has elite speed at 98, uh, acceleration, agility, and speed, 90 balance. Does have 94 accuracy and 91 power. Uh, then his hand stats are all near the end at 96 deking, 95 hand-eye passing, 96 puck control, and then offensive awareness at 95. So he's an elite card if you are someone who likes to score off the rush, go end-to-end. And the thing I'll say, if you are someone who likes to control the TOA, circle in the boards down low, um, you're probably not going to use. There's better options for right-handed players. Uh, Mark Shifley would be one of them. Um, but uh, is he's only got 85 strength, and his balance at 90 isn't terrible, obviously. But because he's slender at 168, he's going to get bumped off the puck. That being said, uh, if you are if you do pack this card, um, the one thing I do want to mention is he's probably going to end up with a 99 or at least a 98 uh, near the end of the season. Um, his his shooting stats, while his accuracy is 94, the, the, the power is at the low 90s, uh, as well as his balance will increase as well, um, and his strength. Uh, I would sell this one because there will be better ones in the future, and obviously that applies to all the Team of the Weeks in prime times, but... Um, there are some, like you're going to see in a second, that you can get now and they'll be fine for the rest of the year. But this one can definitely get upgraded quite heavily. So if you pack this Artemi Panarin, I would sell them immediately. And on to the, the 95 overall, Connor McDavid, six foot one, comes with DK and TK. This is a card that if you packed, you can just use for the rest of the year. And the reason why I say that is he's got 99 speed, agility, and acceleration, 95 balance, 96 endurance. And then his wrist shot is 96 accuracy, 92 power. Hand stats are all above 97, strength at 88. Offensive and defensive awareness at 99 and 93, stick checking at 92. The only reason why I would sell this card uh, for a better Connor McDavid in the future would be if you wanted to put him at center because his face off at 89, obviously there is room for improvement at the high end game. Um, but if you packed this Connor McDavid and didn't want to blow a ton of coins on the team of the year or you know the 97 that'll come out or the 99s, this one is absolutely fine as the upgrades that you're going to see from those ones just aren't all that much. Next up, we've got Pierre-Luc Dubois, 88 overall. Uh, definitely a winger card, even though he's a center, 83 on the draw. 6'3", 207, so he's definitely a player that you can control play with. But at this stage of the game, his skating is pretty rough at 92 uh, speed, acceleration, and agility. And then his shot is is equally as rough. Uh, 84 accuracy, 87 power, hand stats, deking at 84, hand eye at 84, passing puck control at 88. And then his body checking for his size is only 86 along with his strength being at 86 as well. This is a card I would sell immediately. There are far better 88 overall players. And he is left-handed. And because his faceoff is only 83, you're not going to be able to put him at center. This is a hard sell. Next, we've got the six foot one eighty eight Jake DeBrusque at eighty seven overall. Again, lower. Uh, we're we're kind of at the stage of the game where ninety nine skating is kind of the norm, or at least ninety six, ninety seven. Uh, so low nineties as far as speed goes, and then his shot is in the mid eighties at eighty six accuracy, eighty eight power, hand stats all right around eighty five as well. This one is there's like a the team of the decade cards that came out offer some better upgrades than this one. So if you do pack this one and you are a free to play team, you're just looking to upgrade from the base cards this again would be a hard sell for me then we've got the six foot 184 ryan nugent hopkins um again 90 92 speed 93 acceleration 95 agility which again the agility is pretty good but his shots in the low 80s you could do far better and i wouldn't pay anything more than a thousand coins or maybe 1500 coins for this card uh he just doesn't offer enough even when you're trying to upgrade because his body checking is only 75 um so he's he's just not going to be a, he's going to be defensive liability if you're someone likes to bump off the puck and then We've got the 88 Bo Horvat, six foot two fifteen, ninety two skating across the board, mid eighties shot. Again, this one's kind of ho hum. Now his face offs are ninety three, so that's not terrible at all. But if an eighty eight overall card is going to sell for more than like thirty forty k, I would definitely want a different one other than this Bo Horvat, just because his skating isn't nearly good enough. His shots, meh. He doesn't do anything exceptional except for his face off. Um, they're just far better options. So uh, this would be a hard sell for me as well. Moving on, might as well take a look at the bottom two lines. Sorry, Gustav Rydal, Mati Yarvanen, Tag Bertuzzi, sorry Tag Bertuzzi, Yarmir Yager at 82 overall, Justin Vive, and then Chris Fokult 
On defense, we've got the 87 Tony D'Angelo. Uh, under six foot, so for defense minute, that's already kind of like a, a red flag just in this stage of the game. Um, it is tough to use someone who's under five or under six foot just because it, you want to bump and hit at the line, and someone who's smaller obviously not going to be able to do that as well. Uh, his speed, though, is 96 acceleration agility, 96 as well. Uh, and then his slap shot, 88 power, 83 accuracy isn't terrible either. This isn't a bad card by any means if you are looking to upgrade from base cards. Um, actually, if you are someone who started on the holidays and you're looking for an upgrade, this could be an extremely cheap option because right-handed defensemen are just super rare, um, the ones that are any good anyway. So this isn't terrible for free-to-play players, but anything other than that, pass. And then we've got the 86 Damon Severson. Not a lot of crazy highlight names this week. Uh, six foot two, 205. So definitely has a good size, but skating is kind of mad. 93, and then his shot, his accuracy is in the 78s. Um, you combine that with only 86, 86 stick checking and 85 body checking. Uh, there's far better options for 86 overalls, and I would pass on this one. Then we've got the 93 Eric Carlson. Now, obviously, Eric Carlson is probably one of, if not the best, right defenseman in the game currently. Um, 99 skating, and then his wrist shot is pretty deadly at 91 and 92 for deking, or for accuracy and power. Hand stats all above 97, except for hand eye at 96, which is kind of pointless for um, defensemen. Body checking 83. This is a card that you carry the puck out of the zone with, or you know you can actually break out and skate right through everyone. I have the uh, duo Eric Carlson, and it's a blast to use because no one expects the high end speed to just fly right through and cut through def defense. So definitely, if you packed him, um, there are room, there is room for improvement, and uh, I'd probably sell this one as uh, there will be better cards in the future. If you are someone who's struggling for coins, if you are you know kind of have your team set, you're at 92 overall something. This is a really good upgrade, um, but uh, I just wouldn't invest in him right now for the cost that he's going to cost. Um, just better, or, you know, it, better to save and wait. Then we've got the 90 Erasmus Dahlin, so he finally catches up to his classic card. Uh, 93, kind of an awkward skating stats though. 93 speed, acceleration, 94 agility, balance at 94, and then endurance at 87, which is kind of weak, but his shot's pretty good. 92 power, 87 accuracy, and then he is big at 6 foot 3, so um, his body checking at 87 is kind of met, but strength at 88 is good, and then offensive defensive awareness at 89 and 92, stick checking at 91. This is a really good card. If you are someone who is trying to bridge the gap between master set left-handed defenseman and, you know, um, the base guys, this isn't a bad one to go after, as he's probably going to be a lot cheaper than some of the other high-name left defensemen that are available. And then we've got Maxime Noro and Martin Frick. You can avoid these guys if you pack them, just sell them. And then in nets, we've got the 88 overall, Andre Vasilevsky. Six foot three, aggression's too high at 84. Um, hard pass for me. If, uh, you know, there are people out there that enjoy using Andre Vasilevsky, I just will state never go with a goaltender that has 84 or, or really above 80 aggression in this game. I just find that it's far better for maybe just the way I play. Um, but the, the lower aggression goalies are definitely the way to go. So I would pass on him and his, you know, his synergies aren't anything crazy either. And then his backup would be David Madliner. Um, six foot two is okay. Seventy six aggression is cool, but again, he's eighty overall, so there's just better options at this point. So, guys, that is going to do it for team of the week. However, I've got a huge pack pull from uh, Rivals Rewards that uh, I'm going to show you guys. So, um, thank you for watching for team of the week, and I will see you guys later. Enjoy the pack opening.